Welcome to Boomtown on 10 TV Plus. I'm Angela Ann. Boomtown is our commitment to covering stories as Central Ohio grows. We have 1 million more people on the way, and that rapid growth is affecting your everyday life. Construction, traffic, cost of living. Our Boomtown stories will shine a light on potential problems while also seeking out solutions. To get us started, 10TV flew 1,200 miles to Austin, Texas, another so-called boomtown. Here's why. Austin and Columbus, both state capitals with rivers running through them. Both similar in population size and booming with development. They have Dell and Samsung. We have Intel, Microsoft, Amazon, and more. The transformation here in the last quarter century has been, you know, it's jaw dropping. The comparison today to Austin is no mistake. In fact, it's been on the radar for Columbus leaders for decades. The diversity of the economy. About 20 years ago, our community leaders took a trip. We went to Austin, Texas. We wanted to meet with the executives from Dell. We wanted to see what it was to have a tech Based community. But since then, Austin city leaders admittedly made some errors. I do think that if we had been able to get to the place we are at today with home and the changes to the land development code, if we had been able to do that five to eight years ago, we would be ahead of the game. 10 TV's recent trip to Austin uncovered ways Central Ohio leaders can avoid the same pitfalls, but some people here say we're already there. We're building currently probably about half as much housing every year as we need just to keep pace with our growth. Boomtown on 10 TV also found solutions where cities around Austin are making sure they don't get swallowed up by that growth. I'm not sure what Columbus has, but a lot of our water and wastewater piping is ancient. So we, rooftops can't pay for those improvements. We have to get industry in here to pay for those improvements. Each idea, each decision critical from Austin to Columbus to stay ahead of the boom. Could conceivably become the largest economic development in the history of the United States. So where were all these people going to live in Boomtown? And how will those who already call Central Ohio home afford to stay? From Austin to Columbus, we heard one word that seemed to be the answer, density. The question is, is bigger really better? I'm excited. I'm proud that folks will want to be a part of our Columbus story. Columbus City Council President Shannon Hardin was born and raised in Columbus. He says he's watched the city he loves transform from a cow town to a boom town. Uh, we're expected to grow by a million more folks in the next 15, 20 years. Uh, folks are coming here because we have a good thing going on. And we do have a good thing going on. But if we don't plan for the boom, Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther says the good won't last. We need 200,000 more housing units just so that we can try to remain affordable. And so the best way for us to deal with that is to dramatically increase the supply. This summer, City Council passed Zone In, where zoning codes were revamped for the first time in 70 years. It allows for denser housing capacity in certain areas of town. Mayor Ginther says that will make room for 44% of the region's housing needs in Columbus alone. Before that code, the major corridors in our city, we would have added 6,000 units over the next 10 years for housing. Because of these code changes, we'll be able to get 88,000 units into the pipeline to help us deal with this supply crisis that's impacting this region. Ginther and Hardin say robust housing supplies will increase competition and lower the cost of living in Columbus. It's an economic rule of thumb that's worked for another boom town way down south. A funny joke running around Austin is the official bird of Austin is the crane. Rich Fortune moved to Austin three years ago and now runs his startup company from his downtown apartment. Last year, the Texas capital added 20,000 new housing units to its supply. Fortune says the impact is clear on the city skyline and his wallet. My first one bedroom was around 2,500 per month. Um, as more condos were built across the river and also throughout downtown Austin, East Austin, I was able to get a $500 reduction on this apartment that I'm in right now. So it's very competitive. That competition is a relief to many people, new and old, living in Austin. Housing prices swelled during the pandemic as more than 120,000 people migrated to the city. Austin city leaders say that was their wake up call to take their heads out of the sand. They not only changed their zoning code to allow denser development, but also a change in lot sizes. And that has made it possible to build smaller units 
closer together to get more different types of housing typology on a street without sacrificing the feel of a neighborhood which was also really important. Columbus Council President Hardin says the city still has time to remain affordable, but we need to use that time wisely. You can look at Austin, you can look at Nashville, cities that had fast paced growth. They didn't have enough time to plan for it. They didn't have enough time to build enough housing for it. If we don't take advantage of the time that we have to prepare for this, then we could turn into that. Successful boomtowns across America say one way to control how you want to grow is to buy it first. The strategy? Banking land today for future growth tomorrow. Franklin County is doing just that and turning their investment into an opportunity for affordable housing. Harry Zellers and William Taylor are building this new home in Franklin Park. Hey, the room you're in right now is the living room. Uh, we have an open floor plan, um, can lights above, keep it bright. Everything is LED. When it's done, it will sell for $200,000. That's a low price tag in today's real estate market. But Harry and William insist they don't build affordable houses. I develop quality housing for the community that works in the community that happens to be affordable. When you think of affordable housing, they start cutting corners and doing things cheap. There's nothing done cheap here. Nothing. Harry and William build homes for the Central Ohio Community Land Trust. This program allows everybody to be a part of that boomtown experience. We have more people than we can serve that want to be part of this program, so we have a lot to do ahead of us. The Land Trust is part of the Franklin County Land Bank, where Hope Paxson works. They build houses on properties the Land Bank owns, then sell them for way below market value. The Land Bank owns the ground itself, but the buyer owns the home and builds equity. If someone um, does choose to move, with the, which they absolutely can, then there's a um, resale form formula that they've agreed to and that allows for the house to stay affordable always under market rate for what the next person will buy it for. The goal is to provide affordable housing for people like Jasmine Wooten, a single mom of two. So we recently moved into our new home two months ago. I'm a homeowner. Buyers who qualify for a land trust house can earn up to 120% of the city's median income. Jasmine bought this three bedroom new build in the hilltop for $150,000. It's not just a house, it's not a place where we live right now. We have our own home. Harry says he loves watching buyers like Jasmine build equity for their futures and their children and their community. The people who move into the home further forward towards that dream, it gives them something to hope and to live for. That's how we keep the community. Again, it's all about the community, keeping the people having equity, an equitable stake in this community, not just uh, financially, but uh, emotionally. In Columbus, Doug Petcash, 10 TV News. As we know, much of the focus on growth in central Ohio has centered around intel. And for many communities, their biggest concern is how to survive the boom without getting swallowed up. 30 years ago, just outside Austin, another city took some pretty bold steps to embrace that growth. Here's how Round Rock welcomed Dell Technologies, even surpassing expectations, and why cities in central Ohio are taking note. This is every morning. A caffeine fix before heading off to one of Round Rock's seven high schools. It's a huge high school. We have like 4,000 people there. How often do you see new people moving in? Every day. The halls are always filled and crowded. There used to be a ton of trees everywhere and now it's just a ton of shops. And like there's a lot of new houses in our area. So how did Round Rock stay affordable as it grew from a town of 10,000 to 130,000? It's keep doing what you're doing, but do it, do it bigger and do it better. Brooks Bennett grew up in Round Rock. In December, he'll be promoted to city manager, a role his father held when Dell Technologies chose Round Rock as his world headquarters in 1993. Dell recently extended its agreement with the city for another 46 years. But Round Rock leaders say they made sure the city was more than just Dell. You got to have restaurants, you got to have cleaners, you got to have all, all of these other uh, business entities. And if Dell was to leave, those people would, would be in trouble. So Round Rock recruited premium outlets, then Ikea, and now Kalahari Resort and Water Park. Bennett says Round Rock's success today is because city leaders embraced the growth early on, making sure they diversified housing from single-family homes to more density-focused apartments and condos. 
The other thing that we did in the late 80s was we passed a half cent sales tax for property tax reduction. So any time anybody comes from out of town and shops here, it actually brings downward pressure on our property tax rate. And that saves the average homeowner hundreds of dollars a year in taxes. For teachers like Samantha Schaefer, that means being able to work in the city she can afford to call home. So it, it's definitely a huge community, but even so, it still feels really tight knit. Like we have our homecoming parade coming up in about a month and the kids just still do the hometown floats and they do a parade down the neighborhood and everyone comes out to see them, so it's still really cool. Bennett says change and growth are both inevitable. His advice to other Boomtown cities, think big, plan bigger so you're not catching up as the growth arrives. Well, if you had a crystal ball of what you were gonna be, you know, instead of planning to buy right away to build a four lane road, you buy right away to build a six lane road and you can be ready to, to get those done. Now, beyond where to live and learn, food insecurity is at some of the highest levels ever, even in a boom. Ohio families everywhere are going to food banks, and some are skipping meals. But there are initiatives in place now that can help Central Ohio leaders make sure residents, both new and old, don't have to choose between feeding their families and everything else like rent and childcare. This is the number of pallets we will be going through today. Mornings at Imprem Holistic Community Resource Center are mission focused. Families come from dozens of counties and hundreds of zip codes in and around booming central Ohio. We start service from 10 o'clock in the morning, but these families come here from 8 o'clock in the morning and line up. But as the region grows, so does the need to feed families. Alex Abroco Claudi launched the outreach in 2014 out of his church with a goal of feeding 150 families a month. Inprem is now open all day, every Monday through Friday. They get most of the things they can live with from this location. And the shocking news is mm -hmm. we have no funding from anywhere. The demand goes beyond this corner of Carl Road. All 88 counties in our state are served by 12 food banks, which work in partnership with shelters, food pantries, feeding sites, and the like. Keeps me up at night. When I hear from families who have adults that are choosing, being forced to choose regularly to skip meals. Jory Novotny is the executive director of the Ohio Association of Food Banks. We talked with her at the Mid-Ohio Food Collective in Grove City about findings from a just released study on hunger in the state. What we learned is that three out of four households that we're serving either include someone over 60 who might likely not be able to uh, you know, participate in the workforce any longer, or someone who has a disability or a child. This is a great help. I mean, they give you enough food to last more than a week. Mary Vogt told me that she comes through for she and her husband and their disabled adult son. This is the big help as far as food is concerned because with what we get, it's not enough to pay all the bills and things and buy food. Despite development, food deserts still exist in central Ohio. This pantry, like many others, is located in one. Right up to the one in yellow. Making the work of Alex Abroqua Claudi and his volunteers mission critical. We are not giving them goodie bags. We give them food. Tracy Townsend, 10 TV News. Our Boomtown coverage doesn't end here. Join us every day on 10TV and 10TV.com. You'll find stories about the impact of Central Ohio's rapid growth and how it affects the cost of living, jobs, housing, schools, wages, and so much more. We hope you enjoyed watching Boomtown on 10TV+. I'm Angela Ann.